while they're hot. You know, and the nacho. Don't leave them sitting on the counter, okay? Oh, Rick. I want you to meet Mitsu Kawabata. He's going to the university this fall. It's my son, Rick. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm trying to find him living quarters. Good, have fun. I'm not gonna wear that shirt, are you? Oh, honey, Lonnie's gonna be here. She just got home. Be nice to her, huh? I'm always nice to Lonnie. Yeah, I know, but be extra nice to her. Okay. okay. It's just friends and family, so relax and enjoy yourself. Oh, that must be what we're going to Showed up. I haven't seen them much this summer. Mom and Dad really love these parties. Guess what, you guys? Lonnie's here. Where? Over there with your mom and dad. She looks good. Must have been really creepy in that hospital. I saw the scars on her wrist. Yeah. Well, come on, you guys. Let's go. I'll be there in a second. I gotta change. Okay. Rick, one more. I want to get my good side. Okay. Hey, this is what it's all about. Friends, family. Oh, here goes a love and honor speech. <laughs> Most important things in the world, and don't you forget it. Love and honor and good credit. <laughs> oh, do I have lipstick on my teeth? Just a little. Ah, uh, hey, come on, let's go find Lonnie. I bet you can make her smile. I bet you can. Come on. Okay. okay. Hey, Rick. Come here. Where were you? I was studying for the test. Good. Good. Tina tell you, the kid's going to enter the honor science program at the university. Only three seniors are to be selected. <laughs> you told me, she told me three times. I've got to pass the test first, Dad. You'll pass the test. Altruism. Oh. Well, that's selflessness. Doing things for other people without any kind of personal gain. Right, epicy. Oh, that's having both male and female characters. Right. Indigent. David, it's a party. Please get off the kid's back. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Doesn't he ever give you a day off? Catch him, Dad! <laughs> Lonnie, surprise! <laughs> what did I tell you? Hey, Tulip. I told him he could make you smile. Well, you grew. So did you. Hey, you two. Let's suit up. The over-the-hill gang against the punks. What do you say? You should have had that one. Yeah. You get nose, you don't move so good no more. I never move so good no more. I need this for my best friend. I need it all my life. Oh, there you go. work, Tula. You always call me that. Tula isn't my name. Hey, Red. How you doing? <laughs> She's telling jail that stuff I heard about lying. Why don't you leave her alone? She's had a rough time, you know. Well, come on. It's true, though. Boy, you knew he was one of the guys. Just cut it out, okay? Oh, my mother, I can't 
bitches die. She always tries to act so cool. Oh, this is embarrassing. Oh, come on, they're good dancers. Especially your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. I forgot about these parties. I saw you over there with Bobby. Is he still your best friend? Yeah, kind of, I guess. I don't know. We really don't have too much in common anymore. What do you mean? Well, you know, I mean, we're just interested in different things. Plus, I'm much too busy to spend time with him anyway. I'm working for my dad in his office. I'm computerizing his records. Are you going to be a doctor? Well, one thing's for sure. My dad thinks I am. He's already training me. <laughs> he keeps saying, son, medicine can be your meal ticket. <laughs> I want to be a photographer, then that's not much of a meal ticket, is it? <laughs> You can look at them if you want to. Oh, no, that's... Uh... No, I don't mind, really. I want to talk about it. Nobody will. And I kept thinking on the way home that Mom and Dad would have to talk about it. Finally, they'd have to listen. But they never said a word about what happened. You know, about what it was like being in the hospital for all these months. All they talked about was the T-shirt business and about how the weather was changing, about how this might be the beginning of an ice age. <laughs> Why'd you do it? I thought I might as well get it over with. Get what over with? I don't understand. Rick, we're all gonna die anyway, right? I did it wrong, though. If I'd done it right, I'd be dead already. I just kept goofing up and getting myself in deeper, and all I wanted was for just to stop. I mean, haven't you ever felt that way? Like it's just not worth the effort. Yeah, sometimes. But you have to keep going, you know? You have to keep trying. Who says? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I can't do anything right. <laughs> I can't even kill myself right. Well, I'm glad that you didn't. <laughs> Money seems happy. Hmm. I think the worst is over. Just a phase. Papamina is telling him how much she loves him and how the magic flute will protect him. Do you like heavy metal? Yeah, I guess so. I've got a sweat album, The Death Squad. Want to hear it? Okay. Death Squad? Well, yeah. It's better than this. <laughs> I think your little sister's afraid I'm going to take you away from her. <laughs> yeah, well, you better watch it. No, you better watch it. Oh, oh. Ow. 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 Hey, Tulip, you're pretty ferocious. Don't tonight. call me that. <laughs> you know, at the hospital, I thought about you. I kept thinking about all those dumb plays we used to put on in the garage. They weren't that dumb, I wrote dumb. Oh, yeah, what about the one about the baby from outer space? Oh. <laughs> I had such a big crush on you. You never even looked at me. I was such a little runt. That's because every time I looked at you, you practically burst into tears. Well, I was shy. <sighs> See, I loved you. That was so weird. What do you say? You want to see some stars? Yes? Okay. No? Yes? That sounds good. Okay. okay. Sarah, you get this one and I'll All get right. this one.
see the Big Dipper. Mm -hmm, that's Ursa Major, Great Bear, and that cluster over there in the corner, that's Cetus, that's the whale. Stop being so smart. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Philip is really becoming quite an athlete. Yeah. yeah, pretty good. But he doesn't have Rick's natural ability or his desire. Well, we all know that Rick is perfect. Yeah. Well, now, wait a minute. Rick's got problems, too. Last year, there were a million kids here every day, and this year, it's all stopped. He's finally applying himself. But he still needs friends. Everybody needs friends. He's got friends. He just has other priorities. I'll tell you what. We'll trade our problems for your problems. <laughs> here, here. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. Another summer is almost over. <laughs> that was terrific, as usual. I don't know how you do it. Oh, nothing to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lonnie, we're leaving. How about some racquetball tomorrow? Early. I hate to get slaughtered first thing in the morning. <laughs> Lonnie, oh. Good night, Rick. Bye, Lois. Night, Tulip. Goodbye, Stand up Bob. straight. I'll I call am. You. Bye. Yeah. Bye. I'll get it. I knew it was too good to be true. The whole day without a call from the hospital. No rest for the wicked. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye, darling. Thanks for coming. Oh, it was great. Okay, I'll be right over. Yeah, ten minutes. Yeah, bye bye. <clears throat> Can I go with you? Not this time. It's going to be a long night. This one. Blood dripping from the vampire's veins. Hello. Hey, cry from the peanut gallery. I'm practicing. I got another mile left in. You gonna let the old man beat you? Yeah, I'm not as good as the old man. I don't want you to be as good. I want you to be better. Okay. A compromise. Just full out to the robots. What do you say? Come on. Come on. Come on, Rick. All right. Come on. We've got to get this cut. You look like a wild gypsy. You start your dancing lessons on Tuesday. It'll help you with your posture. Did you ever notice how beautifully dancers carry themselves? I don't want to. Oh, don't be silly. It'll be fun. Mimi called. She's dying to see you. She's boring. All she ever talks about is boy George. Daddy's waiting. I gotta go. I'm gonna fix you some breakfast. Uh, Mom, can I paint my room black? What? I saw this really cool picture in a magazine. It had all black walls and black curtains. Lonnie, you cannot paint this beautiful room black. We just had it fixed up for you the way you wanted. It's corny. Goodbye, Lonnie. Wait, um, can I go with you? To work? Yeah. Well, there's nothing for you to do down there. Oh, I just had to wash my face. Well, you'll be bored. Don't go out for neurosurgery, Rick. It's too depressing. I mean, we know so damn little about the brain. Surgery is a gross specialty. Maybe pediatrics? I don't know, Dad. You know, I, I don't think I'd be very good at that, you know, dealing with patients and stuff. Yeah, patients are easy. All you have to do is establish physical contact with them. You touch a shoulder, you touch a hand. It reassures them, calms them down. Well, you've got one in there now waiting to be calmed down. Oh, I'll be right back. You've got a meeting with the surgical staff following the lecture this afternoon. I'll need astral projection to get me there. Where are you? I'm on the L's, Lavelle, Margaret Lavelle. You work so hard. You ever just goof off? Nope. 
Your dad thinks he has a 17-year-old intern here. You should be having some fun. It's summer. Good-looking kid like you. You got a girlfriend? No, I don't have a girlfriend. You should have a girlfriend. Oh, here. I'll help you with these. You never have any answers. Quiet, please. It's never gonna change. Wait. Wait a minute. I'll be right with you. Man, who is that woman? Do you know? Nobody. You know, Rick, you should take a day and go to the lake and just lie in the sun. Dad, who is that woman? What woman? You know, the real pretty woman, the one who was so angry. I don't know what you're talking about. You uh, got the slides ready? All lined up. Epistemology. Uh, a study of the origin of knowledge. You're getting good. Here's one for you. Ochlocracy. What? <laughs> Ochlocracy. Government by the mob. Oh, okay. Mob rule. You gonna hit the books today? Well, I was kind of thinking about going to the lake. Do me a favor. Go to the library. Study for the exam. Now, success ultimately depends on how you use your time. Too much sun isn't good for you anyway. Lights, please, Mr. Brogan. Somewhere in this squash, this mass of cells, is a Hamlet, a King Lear, a My Fair Lady. Somewhere inside this bony structure, there's a connection between the mind and the brain. No one has ever seen it, no one has ever defined it. We, as surgeons, probe. The neck is wrong. The ribbing poles. No, it cannot be fixed. We're going to have to eat 3,000 shirts. No. Lonnie, what are you doing? Helping. Yeah. Look, it's very distracting to have a pretty young girl in here. You know, you understand. That's ridiculous. I'm a hard worker. I wasn't flirting, okay? That's what you always think. You don't trust me anywhere. Look, I have some work for you to do. Come on. I don't want to type your stupid Rolodex cards, okay? I just want to go home. going home now. Uh, it's all right. You sure? Yeah, positive. Great. I'll get my grocery shopping done. Bye. Bye. Uh, I'm kind of dripping water. You kind of are. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, towels would be a nice idea. That'd be good. Towels. That would be nice to us, thanks. Don't call me that. I'll call you what I want. Ow, let go! You mad. Stop <laughs> it, Rick. You're getting the stairs all wet. You're so pretty. Come here. I am not. I hate my face. Are you crazy? No. You're beautiful. Come on, you're so beautiful. Hey, you, you really... Don't you know that? Don't you know how pretty you are? Going down the arcade. Oh, uh, no, you know, I really, I gotta do some stuff in the house. Hey, you nerd, that's what you always say. Hey, Rick, uh, you know, we're not gonna be staying very long. Hey, <laughs> yes, he made it with Sherry Loring. He got her in the backseat of the car. Yeah, we just cut it out, man. She's an animal. She was all over him. I'll see you guys sometime. All right. All right, we'll take it easy. It's just a heart Mostly I like chocolate ice cream. Oh, well, actually anything chocolatey, you know. What about baked potatoes with sour cream and chives? You know, it's really gross. It's food at the hospital. You see, they work to try to make you feel better about yourself, right? So they make all this food, but it's all starch. So if you eat it, you gain all this weight and you feel terrible about yourself all over again. Anyway, I didn't eat that much. I wasn't hungry. Rick, I don't know anything about opera and literature. I mean, you're practically a genius. And I flunked out. I'm so scared. I mean, when school starts, about going back. I mean, you've heard things, right? It's okay. I get so scared. I'm scared that you won't like me. You studying, right? No, I was just talking to somebody. Better get to it. Okay, I will. Um, listen, I can't talk. I'll call you back later, okay? See you in the morning. Sad. Maybe he's just telling her she has a brain tumor or something. Or maybe she's trying to blackmail. You know, people are always trying to do things like that. I don't know.
okay? Rick, wait a minute, honey. Why don't you go with Philip and his friends to play tennis? This is her address. Bobby's brother works for the DMV. I gave him her license number. She's not a patient, are you sure? I checked through everything. So what do we do now? Well, we just wait here for a while. Well, maybe it's none of our business, you know? I mean, maybe we just ought to forget it. No, no, I can't do that. There was something really weird. I mean, who is she? How does my dad know her? Why wouldn't he tell me anything about her when I asked? <laughs> enough, enough. My Wait. God, she can never wear all What those. about this one you like? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's fun giving her something that she appreciates. Lonnie hates everything I like. She hates my clothes. Oh, and she you hates hate my... her clothes. What clothes? <laughs> she doesn't want clothes. An old battered pair of jeans. The more holes, the better. Oh, school starts next week. She doesn't have a thing to wear. Hey, why don't you come out to lunch with us? Oh, I can't. I'm swamped. Oh, you and Harvey need a vacation, you know? <laughs> What would we do on a vacation? We just go nuts together. Lonnie could stay with us. Honey, why don't you go wait for me in the car, okay? I want to have a word with Lois in private. I won't listen. Scram, kid. Um, it's just that Rick and Lonnie are spending an awful lot of time with each other. Well, Rick is the only person that Lonnie really likes to be with. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I know, but... Well, they're just so young. I'd hate to see them get involved, you know? You're overreacting. <laughs> Lonnie, she needs a friend. So does Rick. Well, I know, but... Well, I'm only worried because they're good for each other. Lonnie has changed, believe me. I mean, if there was anything physical going on, I would know about it. She's home. Rick, you know, this is like a stakeout. It's all we ever do anymore. We haven't even seen her. Not once. My mom keeps asking me where I'm going. I keep making up all these places. First, I'm at the old mission, and then I'm at State Street, and then I'm at the lake. Today, I'm supposed to be at my shrinks. Rick? I think about when, when I think of my mother. He always told us about about love and and honor and we're not like that. We're not like anybody else. go play golf with him and his dad in the morning. Tell him I'm not going. I know where you've been with L-O-N-N-I-E. Stop it, Sarah. Rick, there's the chicken casserole in the oven for you, honey. We've waited and waited. I sure wish you'd call when you're going to be late. I cook a nice meal. I'd like a little consideration, please. I'm not hungry. Well, I thought you were going to be home early. Registration is tomorrow. What? Is she locking the door now? Well, thank you. What's the matter? What is it? A 
I love you, Mom. Oh, I love you too, honey. What? What is it? It's nothing. It's... I'm fine, really. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure I'm fine, really. Hey, don't worry about that exam. Tomorrow you'll be great. Well, you should have the problems these Nigerian students have. Do you know all their funds were cut off and they're stranded? I'm trying to get them some part-time work. They're waiting for me, honey. Are you really okay? Yeah. Really, Mom, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. See you later, baby. Rick. Yes? I know you're being nice to Lonnie like I asked you to, and that's very sweet, honey, but be careful there, huh? You take care of yourself, okay? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, you should have seen your old man last night. I was in a rare form. Moi, I got a standing Oh, I got up in front of those dried up doctors and I tore that hospital apart limb from limb in two, count them, two minutes. They ate it up. They wanted more. <laughs> so you guys, um... Ready to start school this morning? Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't need to tell you what I expect from all of you this year. Come on, come on Rick, you're not eating. What's the matter, you got an upset stomach? I'm okay. Rick. What's the matter, pal? Are you nervous about the science exam? I'm not nervous. You've been goofing off for the last couple of weeks, starting to catch up to you. Listen, these tests may be a stupid way to evaluate a person's capacity, but you know the rules, so you can't argue the call. Just give it everything you got. Wow them. And make me proud. Existentialism. I don't know. I don't care anymore. Dad? What is it? Come on, I have to hurry. Nothing. David! Yeah? I forgot your gym stuff. Huh. Sorry, I must be getting senile. You also forgot to kiss me. Then I know I'm getting senile. Have a good day, honey. You're looking good there. Oh, thank you. I am furious. You had a psychiatrist appointment yesterday afternoon at 3 o'clock. You didn't show, you didn't call him, you didn't call me. It's a waste of time. He hates me anyway. That is what you always say. I mean, how many doctors do we have to go through? It's boring, okay? It's like, hi, Lonnie, how are you feeling today? And then he looks at his watch. Your father and I spend a lot of money. Well, I didn't ask you to. Would you mind telling me exactly what it is that you have been doing every afternoon? Nothing. Reading. Nothing. That's right, Harvey. Just sit there. Don't get involved. I'm involved. I'm listening. It seems like I'm the only one around here who is concerned about Lonnie. It was only one time. One time? Who are you kidding? It's been going on for years. You tell me that you're at school, and then they call and say you're not there. You tell me you're at a friend's house. I call them, and they hardly know you. You never tell me the truth. You never level with me. It's always the same. This is the deal. You skip classes this year, and I'm sending you off to boarding school. Daddy, please be on my side. do good and my mom said she's gonna send me away to boarding school i'm afraid i'm never gonna do good i'm so scared don't worry about it you're gonna be fine you'll be just hey, fine Rick. hey lonnie hey hey bob what's up well we're going to the arcade after registration if you guys want to come uh i don't know maybe 
We'll try. It's hard. Everybody knows they're all gonna look at me. Nobody's gonna bother you. Come on. I'll see you after registration. Take in a deep breath. Hold it. Hold it. He's got a tenderness around the ribs. We'll x-ray. Non-surgical belly, no internals. He took quite a bit. Yeah. Well, while you got him here, you better run a blood for drugs. Check him for alcohol. He's been acting very strange lately. All right. I'll do a full physical. You probably do anyway. I don't know what's going on with him anymore. You try talking to him? He won't talk. All I can get out of him is that he was in a fight. Hmm. Well, it's difficult being a teenager these days. Yeah, but Rick's different. I mean, he's not some goofball. Mm. All right, Rick. Come with me. We'll do some checking on you. You got that science exam at two. I'll call and arrange another day. I told you I'm taking the test. Don't be ridiculous. You have to be in tip-top shape. I want you to do well. I feel great. Ready to show the world. Ready to give it all my heart and soul. How's that? Hey, what is this? You're gonna be real proud of me, Dad. Don't you worry about it. Rick! You go ahead. You wanna talk about it, Rick? Is this over some, uh, some girl? No. Why don't you tell your dad what's on your mind? I mean, he's a good guy. It's not easy being a parent, you know? Go ahead, tell him. I promise you. Once you get it off your chest, whatever it is, it won't seem so terrible. Hey, Miss Brogan. Hi, Bobby. Rick's not here. Is he okay? Well, we got him out of there as fast as we could. Oh, I think so. His dad took him over to Dr. Madsen's office. He's at school now, taking that science test. What? Rick hardly speaks to me anymore. And I just wondered if you knew why. You heard of the terrible twos? Rick's going through the terrible teens. 
was distant and cold and disgusted with everybody. Yeah, maybe. But I... Don't take it personally, honey. Okay. Well, just tell Rick I came by. Sure will. Say hello to your folks for me. Will do. I just want to be with you. I have to be with you. I'm so sorry. I just felt so dirty, all those boys staring at me. I'm so sorry. I never want to go back there again, ever. Hold me, please. Just hold me. Oh, God. Your face. I just want to get in bed with you and pull the covers over the both of us and just never wake up, never. Please don't hate me. Oh, please. God, Lonnie, I could never hate you. Never. You're the first girl that I've ever been with. And you're the only girl that I'm ever going to be with, ever. I love you so much. But please hold me. Just hold me. I don't want to get up. Go back to school. I don't want to brush my teeth or eat or drink. I don't want to move. I don't even want to breathe. Alma! Alma! She's supposed to stay until five. I don't think she ever does. Lonnie! Is Alma... <gasps> what is it? What's the matter? Mom, just wait a minute. Just let me explain, okay? What's going on here? Please, it's not what you think. It's... Oh, hell. Get out. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. Here. I don't want them anymore. I don't need all these. I just want to look at the pictures.
going to send me away now, won't you? I want you to apologize to your mother. It's not going to help. She's very upset. I can't be what she wants me to be. I just can't. Look, you better clean up this room. Daddy, you see, Rick is the only person that likes me just the way that I am. Do you know what I mean? He likes everything about me. Everything. And I love him, Daddy. I really do. I think about him all the time. Even when I close my eyes, I think about him. And I want to be with him. Do you understand? Oh, honey. You're going to feel like this a dozen times before you're 17. ticket to do whatever she wants to in this house. It's not true. I'm just as upset as you are. Then why don't you ever do anything? Why don't you take part? We're gonna have to tell David and Tina about this. <laughs> That's all you care about. David and Tina. Will you leave me alone? I'm going to see if she's okay. Hello. David, I'm sorry to wake you, but... What is it? Well, Lonnie, I... I went to her room to check on her, and she's gone. Hang on, Rose, hang on. <laughs> Rickson is in his room, isn't he? Of course. I'll check. Come on. Lonnie's missing. Don't make him up. Rick. Damn. Well, it's not Rick, it's Lonnie. She's the one. I left the keys in my car. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't take your car. Well, what do we do for money? Well, I got a little. I figured that'll take us as far as we need. So we can ditch the car in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, we'll go some place where nobody knows us. Oh, where nobody can ever even find us. A long way from my dad and the rest of the immigrants. And we'll get some jobs, and we'll find our own place. Mm-hmm. And we'll stay up all night, listen to music. What's the sunrise? Don't turn around. It's like the red light on. You think you got it bad at home? If you try running away again, we'll let you spend some time in a juvenile detention home. See how you like it there. Stealing a car. You know, next time your parents aren't going to be so willing to come down here and bail you out. They going to be here soon? Rick's never been in trouble before, never. It's just since Lonnie got back. Are you saying it's all Lonnie's fault? Lonnie's the one with the problems. That's no secret. Does it occur to you that maybe Rick has some problems, too? He's got problems, big ones. You know what I found out? He flunked the test for the science program. This is a kid with an IQ of 140, a kid who's always excelled in everything. Yeah, I've heard all about it from the day he was born. Rick the genius, wonder boy, super kid. Rick and his music, Rick and his photography, Rick and his amazing grasp of mathematical concepts, Rick and his future as a doctor. Has it ever occurred to you that you are driving this boy too hard and maybe he's rebelling? was at my house yesterday afternoon in bed with Lonnie. Did you know that? 
What are you talking about? You heard me. Well, we know who's responsible for that. Lonnie, of course. She's the one who plays around. Yeah, well, you won't have to worry about Lonnie corrupting your pure son any longer. She's going away to school. Fine. When does she leave? Oh, in about ten minutes? Not soon enough. So you're not going to press charges? Teach these kids a lesson? No. You better watch these kids. I've seen it a thousand times. You don't crack down on them and they go from bad to worse. Well, your car's right up front. Come on, let's get out of here. talking to me. You got it. What did I do? Just tell me. Nothing. It's not you. Hey, what's this music? I wouldn't like it. No. I like it kind of. Sort of. Deli aroma. Out of the right corner, spell Left corner, Rick. The crouch, Terry. Those right punch. A left punch. Hard jab right into the jaw. Boom, boom. You ever gonna come downstairs? I mean, you can't spend your whole life up here. You gotta come down sometime. Maybe I'll kill myself. He makes a lot of sense. Like all those guys I hear about. <laughs> Cut it out! Yeah, I was only teasing. Why are you a lot of fun? A lot of men. Is this yours? Yeah. Some poems. Did you read them? I don't snoop, Lonnie. I've always tried to respect your privacy. Well, you can read them, you know, if you want to. Mama? Hmm. Don't make me go. It's a wonderful school. I just fail. I'm not any good at school. Lonnie, this is an opportunity for you to change things. Please don't make me go. The psychiatrist thinks. The psychiatrist doesn't know anything, okay? I never tell him the truth. Wonderful. A hundred dollars an hour down the drain. But I will from now on. I promise. I'll try really hard, and I'll go to school, and I'll study really hard, and I won't even see Rick either. I'm going to be so good, you're not even going to believe it. You always promise. Well, maybe I could go to school and stay with Grandma for a few weeks, and then come back. This is for the best, Lonnie. Honest. You never care about what I want, neither one of you. We love you. You're our daughter. You never wanted me. Lonnie! You think I didn't know that? I heard you talking to Tina one time about how you had to get married. But, uh, honey, I didn't mean that I didn't... I was eight years old and I came in from the backyard and I heard you telling her that you never even wanted kids. But then you got pregnant and you had to get married. Well, maybe at the beginning, but after I saw you, I wanted you. You never wanted me before I was born and then you didn't want me after. That's not true. All the hard work, this house, everything, it's for you. What a laugh! You won't even let me live here. But we've tried everything. Tennis lessons, dancing lessons, French, modeling, everything. To get rid of me! Just to get me out of your life! I'll answer it. I'll answer it. Hello? God, I hate you! Don't you I hit me! Do you hear me? You don't hit me! Do you hear me? 
What I don't understand is why you blew the test. Deliberately blew. Look, the mistakes you make now are going to affect your whole life. The school you go to, your career as a doctor. You never listen to me. I'm not going to be a doctor. Fine. I can accept that. All I really want for you is to grow up to be a good person, a good man. Truthful, loving, a man of honor. Oh, I see. Like you? Rick. Hey, I'm talking to you. Can't you get it through your head? I'm on your side. I may be your dad, but I'm also your friend. I already have a friend, thank you. Lonnie, I want to see Lonnie. She's the only person that I can talk to. That's not true. You can talk to well, me. Well, let's put it this way. She's the only person that I want to talk to. She's all I care about in this whole damn world. Rick, you're not going to blow everything for a deeply disturbed 16-year-old. She tried to kill herself. Well, what do you want me to do? Turn my back on her? Would that make you happy? Is that what a good man does? Well, I'm not like you, Daddy. I'm not going to let you see her. You can't stop me. I've already stopped you. She leaves in the morning. I know what you are. Do you hear me? You're a cheat and you're a hypocrite. Shut up. Do you hear me? I know. Rick. Rick! Rick! Then you get two, ten, six, three, six, seven, and eight. Eight. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save that, because I can do that next turn, and then add a yeah. word on this way. See, yeah. I'm going to be able to do this. All right, there. I can put the Q on the double letter. What do you mean? I'm going to make nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. OK, I'll do that. I mean, you're ready to pounce. I, can I am not ready to pounce. <laughs> I'm gonna get an egg tart. <laughs> You're the slowest one of all. Hey. How are you? See you around, Rock. I'm done. We can do it. Come on. I don't want to leave Timmy.
tell me about it. About what? About the time you cut your wrists. Why do you want to hear about that? Because I just keep thinking. We could have kept going. We could have done it. It's not that easy, Rick. We could have ended up crippled, or lost an arm, or a leg, or both. And then we'd have to depend on our parents for the rest of our lives. Tell me about before. What happened? It hurt. And it was scary. It really hurt a lot. There are other ways to do it. It doesn't matter. No matter how you try to do it, it's not that simple. I remember all the blood. I was so scared. After I did it, I was so terrified. I read in the paper this morning. Another kid in Texas. And a little girl in Los Angeles. When I was younger, my grandmother had some baby chickens. And one of them was sick. So I tried to kill it, to put it out of its misery. You know, because I'd seen my grandfather do that millions of times. So I hit its head against a post. But it wouldn't die. I kept hitting it, and it wouldn't die. It just kept making these little noises. I was shaking all over. I didn't know what to do. Finally, I took it, and I threw it in my grandmother's furnace. It was the worst thing I ever did. I never told anybody about it. It's hard, Rick, to end a life. Every night, my mom plays the piano, for as long as I can remember. Tonight, she's working on a Chopin concerto. She'll find the photographs and the sheet music. Oh, Rick. Maybe she's in there right now. Maybe she's by the piano right now, looking at Maybe she hasn't found them yet. Maybe we can go and get them. No! I want her to know the truth. I want her to know who she's really living with. That house. The reality of that house. I'm never going back there. So what are we going to do? We'll go to your house. Are you kidding? They won't even let you in the door. our last night together. I will go to your dad's garage. I cannot wire the car. They'll just catch us. And this time it'll be worse. This time they'll put us in juvenile hall. I didn't mean we would go anywhere. Lonnie? Lonnie? I heard you. There's nothing else we can do, is there? Hey, I don't want to feel this way. I don't. I don't. I want it to stop. I can't live without you. And I won't. What do you want to hear? Whatever. Whatever you're working on. Well, I'm working on that Chopin concerto, but I'm too wiped out tonight to play that. How about some Debbie C? Mm. How about Gollywog's Cakewalk?
going to about ten. Put her down. She won't run away. It's okay. Just stay right there, Timmy. What if a dog comes along? She'll climb a tree. Cats can take care of themselves. Where's the key? It's gonna be out here all alone in the dark. It's not that dark. There's a moon. That's a big dipper. I can hear room. Maybe we could go to Grandma's. No, they'll just find us, come and take us, separate us. It's true. Couldn't do that to her anyway. She'd just get all upset. I don't have any grandparents anymore. They're all dead. Hey. There's no place to go. What we do. The whole world's gonna blow up soon anyway. I promise you I won't. Just talk to me. Say anything, but just keep talking to me. Once upon, once upon a time, there was a, a beautiful girl named Tool. Why do you always call me that? Because you have the two most beautiful lips I've ever seen. And, and because you because you have a face just like a flower. Oh. 
Unitant standing by 2115. Excuse me. Excuse me. Officer, I'm Dr. Brogan. I believe my son's been in an accident. David. They're gone. Sorry. Why can't I see Mama? Because she needs this time alone. She's in her room. Yesterday, in his room, he told me She only cared about her. About Lottie. Daddy. Shh, baby, shh. I wish you would have finished the job the first time. I wish you would have never come home. Philip, wait. He must have really hated us. <laughs> Boy, he must have hated us. Sweetheart, what's the matter? Did he go like that? Did he go like that? No, 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 darling, no. That's just a bad old dream. No, shh, shh. Everything's gonna be all right now. Come on, come on. That's all right, darling. Rick loved you. He wouldn't hurt you or try to scare you. Why did he do it, Daddy? I want Mama. Okay, sweetheart, come on. Let's go. Here's your Mama.
of two children upstairs in our bedroom. Who are confused, frightened and hurt. They need you. I need you too. We have to hang on, all of us. As a family. You know, I deal with life and death every day. I've always been able to operate under stress. I've always been clear-headed, in control, strong. But this, I... I can't handle this alone. We have to make funeral arrangements. Tina. Do whatever you want. You're in this too. What do you want? I want to die. The families have asked me to say a few words. I had known Rick and Lonnie since the first day they were born. I was their doctor. Did my responsibility end with their annual physical exams? Where did I fail? What clues did I miss? What has happened to our children? When people reach helplessness, 
They need an act to help them out of it. In an ideal world, a doctor would intervene or a, a helpful adult. What I want to say to the young people here today and in the community, suicide is not the answer. It is not the way out of pain. All it does is lay that pain on the broken shoulders of the survivors. I've known Rick since he used to play first base on my t-ball team. We were in the championships. It was the bottom of the ninth and the bases were loaded. And he made the most unbelievable catch. And he won the game. After that, whenever I looked at Rick, I saw a hero. I wish I would have known that heroes can be in trouble. That heroes can really be hurting inside. We haven't been as close as we used to, not lately. But I just wish that I would have known what was going on. I just wish that I could have helped. Nice lunch. Thanks, Helen. Uh, but uh, maybe the kids. Huh? Come on, kids. We've got all this good stuff in the kitchen. Can't believe all the food that people brought here today. Tina. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Make them go away. Make the people go away. They're only trying to help. <laughs> Hang on, hang on. Was it my fault? Was it, was it no. my fault? <clears throat> she was writing little poems. Look. Mama, see, Daddy, I wrote you a poem on my wrists. I used a... razor for a pen. Oh, God. I signed my name in blood. Mm. But you wouldn't read it. She wanted me to read it. She left it out for me to read. She wanted me to stop her. If something happens to me, please take care of Timmy. Stop. Here. I can't stay here anymore, Harvey. I can't look at the garage. I can't look at the grass where she was lying. I can't go past her room. Get me out of here, Harvey. I'll get the car. Let me out of car. No, 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 no. They took that car away. Is the other car parked in the garage? I took it out of parked at the curb. Promise me, Harvey, you'll never park that car in the garage again. No, no, no. We'll, we'll move Promise out of here. Me. We don't have to live here. We can get out of here. Uh, no, no, no. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. Come on, come on. Come on.
Hello. David? I'm so sorry. Are you all right? Yes. Thank you. I'm thinking about you. I appreciate it. I really do. Is there anything I can do? Listen. I can't see you anymore. I hope you understand that. David. I just, um, I can't do it. What are you going to do with his records? I thought I'd take him down to the hospital. Well, maybe I could keep him. You don't like Rick's music. You never did. Well, Rick said that they grow on you. Yeah, well, you're not Rick. Well, maybe I could get used to him, Dad. Listen, there are a lot of people down at the hospital that will enjoy them, okay? I always like this shirt. It's Rick's Beethoven shirt. If your mother sees you in that, it'll tear her apart. Stop thinking about what you can get. He was my brother. He would have wanted me to have that shirt. Oh, Philly. I'm sorry. I'm not myself anymore. Take the shirt. Let's of course you should have the shirt. Forget it all. No, take forget anything it. you oh, want here. Forget it. Honey, you want to go through the samples for the fall? Listen, I had some ideas. I thought we could do the red and black again. Only we would make the stripes smaller. That really flies out of here. I thought that we... Lois? I don't care about the red and black stripes. I don't care. All right, look, I got a great idea. Let's go over to Lou's for some Kung Pao chicken. That stuff really knocks your socks off. I'm not hungry. All right, we'll go home. Get a good night's rest. I'm not going home. I don't want to ever go home. You can't stay here another night, that couch. You... I can't pretend everything's OK. I just can't. Lois. Pour one for me.
Wait till tomorrow. We'll call David and set something up. Treats us like we have a disease. Tina won't even talk to me. Tina's not talking to anybody. He's not talking to David, not anybody. Not the kids. What is it? David. What the hell's going on? Tina! Tina, we've got to talk. We've got to get this out. It's, it's all bottled up and it's just getting worse. We're friends. We're best friends. Please don't shut me out. I can't talk. Uh, then just listen, because I've got to. I, I, I can't hold it in any longer. I, Tina, I'm going crazy. Everybody avoids the subject. Nobody even mentions her name except in the papers, all that sordid stuff on the news. Lonnie, my daughter, Lonnie, she was alive. She was a person. She existed. Lois. She's not some terrible disgrace. Lonnie, you've had too much to drink. If I can't talk about my daughter and what happened, what can I talk about? Calm down. What do I see when I close my eyes at night? Calm down, everybody. Calm down. <sighs> she keeps blaming herself. But you know, Lonnie was a hard kid. Right from the start. She used to lie in her crib, kick and scream, until she fell asleep out of sheer exhaustion. The other night, I thought I heard her crying. I woke up, and I was so happy. I thought she was in her crib. And for a few moments there. I was so happy. That's so relieved. She knew, even then, when she was a baby, there was no way to get my attention. Oh, I just want her back again. I want them to bring her to me, my child wrapped in a blanket. I want to hold my baby again. I want to touch her face and smell her sweetness and feel her baby hands and feet and ears. I want another chance to be a good mother. Tina, we need one another. We can all help each other. I can't. A large number of China's panda bears could face starvation this winter, as their most important food, bamboo, dips off. 
If the bamboo disappears, the panda will disappear with it. And yet another species will join the ranks of extinct animals due to man's careless wasting of the Earth's nat... Hey, what are you doing? I can't watch. It's so sad. I love panda bears. Stuff look good on the picture. Yeah, we'll just turn the TV back on, all right? Why can't my friends come over? Because Mom can't handle it. How long is it going to be like this? I don't know. Hillary called. They're having this welcome party at school for all the mothers. She wants me to come bring Mama. Dad will go with you. It's for mothers. If you don't have a mom, then your dad can go. Big deal. But I have a mother. Cry, baby. Rick told you not to call me that. Just makes me cry more. Rick, 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 Rick. That's all I ever really hear. Basic diet for the world's favorite bear. But so far... Although they have been able to match the food value of bamboo, the pandas have not yet developed a taste for them. Hurry, Philip, we're gonna be late. Same thing. I just can't get past this poster board. What's your next class? American history or something. Come on, I'll walk you. What's the matter, honey? I thought I wanted to come, but now I don't. Aw, oh, come on, I'll be with you. You'll stay right by me? Like glue. Come on. You should have worn a dress today. <laughs> But I think that you should be there, Harvey. I'm not going, Horace. It would help us, I know. It's private. You have been avoiding anything unpleasant and difficult for the last 16 years. I don't want to discuss my personal life with a lot of people. It isn't personal anymore. Our lives have been in newspapers all over the country. I think we have something to say. Get it out. You go, Lois. You don't need me there. But I do. I've... I've never spoken in public before. But Dr. Madsen asked me to come here tonight and speak to all of you. At first, I said no. I didn't think that I'd be able to get up on my feet and stand in front of you. But I have to talk. I think it's important to talk about what happened in our family. If my husband died, I'd be called a widow. There's no name for what I am now. There is no name for what we have to live through. There were so many signs that our daughter, Lonnie, was telling us what she was going to do. She had done it before, and she talked about it a lot. She didn't seem interested in her old friends. She was hostile, impulsive, withdrawn, and she didn't seem interested in school. She seemed so hopeless, but we thought it was a phase, something that would pass. It is estimated that over 50,000 young people attempt suicide each year, and that more than 5,000 of them kill themselves. It is a national epidemic we simply must form workshops in all our schools where a therapist can actually talk to the kids and show them that there is another way to deal with these overly powerful emotions. 
Some people believe that suicide is the solution to a crisis. Remember, crisis is temporary, but death is final. When you observe the signs of suicidal behavior, oh, say your kid makes some dramatic changes in eating habits and sleeping habits, withdraws from friends and family, becomes obsessed with death, what can you do? You can get help. How do you know if children are really distressed or if they're just trying to manipulate their parents to get what they want. You don't know. Just don't ever take the chance. Tea is served. Thank you. Cookie? Nothing. You know, now that Sarah's back in school, maybe it'd be a good idea for you to volunteer as a class mother once a week. Maybe. I think work's the answer. Getting involved again. When I'm in the middle of surgery, there's no time to think of anything else. Do you think it'll ever be more normal again? Like it used to be? You know what I'd love? What? To hear you play the piano. I've missed hearing you play. I don't think I can play anymore. Of course you can. Come on. I'm awful rusty. It'll be good for you. Sounds great. Quiet from the peanut gallery. <laughs> play the Chopin. That Chopin concerto you've been working Well, I can play a little of it. Where's that pretty part? What's the matter? <laughs> Tina. Tina, this is nothing. She's nothing, absolutely nothing. You gotta believe me. People so cruel to each other. Listen to me. The woman. I don't doesn't... care about the woman. I don't care about the woman. It's over. It didn't mean anything. Yeah, well, it meant something to me. And it meant something to your son. Nothing's the matter. There's nothing the matter. Don't tell her that. Don't lie to her. Jenny and I are just having a few problems, but we're going to work tell them out. Tell her the truth. Now, you go on back to bed, sweetheart. I'll be in to tuck in in just a minute. Very good girl. Go on. She's only a little kid. Why hurt her more than she's already been hurt? Oh, sir. Dr. David, the big expert on child rearing. Tell me all about it, Dr. David. Tell me how careful you were with your son, Rick. Wait, you really kept him hopping, didn't you? 
No time to relax, no time for anything frivolous, like friends. I never stopped him from having friends. No, he always had to study more and do more and be more. He was too busy for friends, too busy expanding his vocabulary, too busy trying to be perfect, trying to be like his dad. I wanted a lot for him. I, I thought I was doing the right thing. It's all your ego, wasn't it? You just wanted another you, your son. God, there are never any real feelings. That's why you like being a surgeon so much. Your patients are anesthetized. You can talk, but you don't have to listen. Are you coming to school with me this morning, Mama? You said you might. I know, honey. I'm sorry. I can't. Morning. Morning. Bye. You're not going to eat any breakfast, Dad? No, I'm in a hurry. I got to get down to the hospital and check out some x-rays. You think that... Then maybe I could come down to the office after school. You know, help you out, like Rick did. I'm sorry. Rick was programming the computer. It's very technical. See, we can't take a chance on making a mistake with somebody's medical history or medication. Okay? See you tonight. Bye, Dad. You can come back around noon and get your things. No one will be here then. Tina, for please. I'll think of something to tell the children. I can't look at you anymore. I can't even look at you. All right, if you say so. Harvey. Yeah. What is it? And 
it's just that nothing is the same anymore. I mean, nothing looks the same to me or tastes the same. I drink a cup of coffee and I can't taste it. I mean, my flowers don't smell sweet to me anymore. You know, everything is just, like, flat and lost and sad and over. Yes, it's true. But you still have two children, Tina. And you have got to pay attention to them. You cannot shut yourself off. I know you're right. What about you? I don't have anything to save. It's the end of the line for Harvey and me. But you, <laughs> you still have a chance. A chance to talk to your kids and to listen. I can say that because I blew so many chances with Lonnie. And I can't ever get any of them back, ever. <laughs> so try. Hey, you guys stay down. I've got them. I'm not hungry. No, you like these. You see, Rick taught me. You put the cheese in the middle. Mommy? Give me a hug. What was the first word I ever said? Light. You said, light. Every time we passed a light bulb, you tried to reach out and grab it. Was I cute? Oh, very cute. No, you look like a wet rat. Oh, she I did, did not. not. Anyway, you can't remember that far back. Oh, I saw pictures. I look like Dopey. I had big ears. No, you didn't. You were beautiful. Are you kidding? I saw pictures. No, you were all beautiful, all three of you. Was I smart? Very smart. Quick, bright, and alert. Right from the beginning. When I first held you in my arms. Looked down at you. What about me? Oh, you were a holy terror. <laughs> Especially when you learned to walk. You were into everything. I couldn't turn my back on you for a minute. I'd be in the other room changing Sarah, and you'd go in the bathroom and crawl up in the medicine cabinet and get the cold cream. <laughs> Rick was always trying to keep you out of things. Remember? Two little blackbirds sitting on a hill. Flyway Jack, flyway Jill. Let me! Alice, thin as a toothpick, hair just like a tack. Upstairs to take a bath. Alice jumped in the bathtub, pulled out the stopper plug. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my soul. There goes Alice down the hall. Poor Alice. On amen. Why do we say on amen instead of amen? Because when Rick was little, he couldn't say amen. So he grew up saying unamen. We just copied. You didn't eat your hamburger.
five sleeping pills. How many did you take? Only six. When? A couple minutes ago. How could you do that? How could you do that? Call your father and tell him to meet me at the hospital. And call Lois and tell her to come get you. I'll, Quick. I'll need to go to the hospital. I'm all right. Oh, yeah. How can I believe you? How can I ever believe anything you say after you pull this? Damn you. Damn you, Philip. Damn you. Well, you better be careful next time and take enough pills. You can do brain damage, you know. Could you shoot myself? Oh, yeah, you know where there's a gun? Me. You gonna do it today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. How are you gonna do it, in the head or the heart? I don't know. <laughs> you gonna do it here so I'm the one to find you? Stop, Mama, stop. Why am I being brutal, huh? Well, suicide is brutal and ugly and painful, so think about that next time. You paid attention to Rick. Rick always got to eat his attention. But Rick Scott is dead. Do you understand that? He's dead. His life is over. Now get in. Oh, I feel terrible, Mom. There were times that I wish he was dead. He, he was always better than me. It was my fault. It was my fault. You didn't oh. do it. You didn't do it, Philip. None of us did it. It was Rick. He was the one. Just Rick. It's such a terrible, terrible way. Get in, baby. I I'm sorry I was so rough on you, honey. I'm just so angry at Rick. Me too. Philip. You must promise never to do that again. Because I couldn't bear to lose you. I love you. I love you. Oh, one o'clock. You ready to ramble? You know what I've been thinking? Mm -hmm. We got married because I was four months pregnant. It's true, I used to pray I'd lose the baby. Can you imagine that? I used to say to myself, I will not have this baby. She must have been determined to be born. She must have wanted life so much before she had it. Harvey, we've never really had much of a marriage. Our relationship has been based on our problems. The problems that we had with Lonnie, that's what we've shared. As long as we had the hysteria about what to do with her, we were okay. We didn't have to face the emptiness. So, here we are. You're there, I'm here. And what is in between? We have the business. I don't want the business. I don't care about the business. You can handle it without me. Well, it's crazy. You're the designer. You could hire somebody else. I think I want to travel a little. You know, when I was a kid, we had a book. 
about the seven wonders of the world, and I always opened it to the same page. It was a photograph of the Pyramid of Giza, you know, in Egypt. It was so perfect, so mystical. I used to just stare at it. I know that this probably sounds dumb, but Harvey, I want to go there. I mean, before I die, I want to see if it's really there, if it really exists. And then, after that? I don't know about after that. You love the business. You sleep and eat the business. No, I don't. We're married 16 years. That ought to mean something. That's what's so terrifying. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything at all. Tina, there's no way we can bring Rick back. We have to concentrate on the living. We have Philip. We have Sarah. We have a life. Together. I'm sorry, Tina. I'm terribly sorry. Your cab is here. I'm ready. I'll send everybody postcards from Cairo. I wish you would let me take you to the airport. Oh, I hate goodbyes at airports. They always seem so final. I uh, hope you'll be friends again with David. You'll call from New York? Mm-hmm. What about all your stuff? I don't want it, Harvey. Why not? You worked for it all these years. You deserve it more than me. Give it to charity. I want to travel light. The lawyers will work out a fair arrangement for your share of the business. 50-50 down the line. I trust you. Well. We never have much to say to each other, do we? Unless it's about T-shirts. <laughs> you laughed. That's the first time since Lenny. That's something else we'll always have to talk about, Lonnie. Even though she's gone, we still have her, a part of her. That she gave us. I'm sorry, I couldn't. Um, I could meet with you tomorrow. 
Yeah, and then we can go over your schedule and figure out what kind of classes you should take. Yeah, but I just can't tonight. I'm, tonight I'm spending with my children. Okay, fine. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. Sounding good, honey. Keep it up. Okay. You ready to do it one more time? Here we go. And one, two, three, four. Bye. doing fine. You're not going to get a divorce, are you? This is a hard time for all of us. And, um, well, your daddy and I are not perfect. We have a lot of problems we have to work out. Is that what the therapist means when he says it's going to be hard for all of us to survive what happened? To Rick? Mm hmm. But we will. We'll do it together as a family. How long is it going to take? I don't know. I do. It's going to take forever. Hey, David. Hi, Harv. Come on, we're going to dinner. Oh. I'd like to. I have all these invoices. Shut I up and come on. Tina made your favorite. Grilled chicken with salsa and tortillas. I took one look at her and I said, the old hotshot had met his match. <laughs> he was the movie star and I was the jerko. All the beautiful women fell for him, you know. I couldn't get even one. Until Lois. Until Lois. I gotta get something. You do? Yep. All the wonderful times we have had in this house. Thanksgiving. Christmas. New Year's. And every single 4th of July. <laughs> Do you remember the chili bake-off? <laughs> I remember Rick Astor saying he almost died. <laughs> yeah. Took to his bed for a week after that one. Turned green if you even mentioned chili after that. <laughs> I can't believe it. Happy birthday I forgot all about it. You. I was writing checks all day. That, and this is the sixth. It never even dawned on me. It's my birthday. I can't believe it. Make a wish. Hurry. All right. I wish. Not out loud. No. I wish. Well, come on. Blow out the candles. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he can't tell. There are 46 candles. 46. Mm. We had to buy five packages. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank everybody for my birthday party. You're welcome. Now, before you cut into the cake, we have a little surprise for you in the other room. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, come Can on. Take the cake. No, bring your wine. Okay. This way, gents. Well, thank you. All right. Right here on this stage, playing A, B, and D flat. No, Philip, playing Aida. Playing the triumphal march from Verdi's Aida, trumpeting sister leading the Brogan family band. Give him a big hand, everybody. <laughs> okay, ready? Yep. One, two, three, four.
great. <laughs>